Madam Joel and the Madam Kokila Devi and all students. Really, my privilege to be here and share my experience. 2007, especially that I wanted. Today I shall be brief stating the progress in serial biofortification. Yeah, taking some examples from we at IIR, we partnered AMP scheme on fortification. We are in cell. Tackling the handling the biofortification after our director. All know green revolution. There was uh, the green revolution. Security was ensured by the enhancement of uh, grains production, the rice and wheat, and this. Production has been consumers, the public distribution, and also through midday meal schemes and other schemes. What about the availability? See the balanced diet. Here, at least countries quite far from they are mostly dependent. Than half of the world, at least one third of India. I have not put here all global hunger in their values. We know that we suffer from micronutrition and also for the world, most critical are iron, okay, calcium. These are the most vital elements. Which will protect the co productivity takes also. But here, micronutrient deficiency definitely leads to the balance because your productivity is not as it should be. And uh, by global data, going only by the data which was taken by NIN National Institute. You can see they have surveyed around black children, raised one third of ways to combat the micronutrients. Classic cases, iodized salt, Brazil, fortification, salt, iodized salt. And also food and supplementation is also might be aware in villages or in government. CDS, they will provide iron supplement children, pregnant lady. In addition to that, now nowadays patient has taken the uh, active role addressing this uh, micronutrient man. And there is a separate program going parallel with biofortic. Actually, there is one group, this group, a fortification group, like versus biofortification, but most of the time, fortification people rely on biofortification. Many other people are in us. Must have noticed at least. On milk packets and oil packets, F plus. Nothing but it is being fortified. It is uh, fortified with and milk also. There is some kind of fortif oil also fortification. Salt also, of course. And some districts are being studied for fortification. 
already the effect of the fortification. So, Honorable Prime Minister has uh, declared that by 2024, food fortification, all this rise in public distribution system and the medium is still. So, what do what do they do in fortification? Fortification is like artificial. They will make a mix of rice of rice with rice flour they put all the vitamins as you can read up from different proportions based on their shelf value and estimated average requirement for human and their storage they will again mix it with rice they will distribute PDS. but this kind of infrastructure will available so food fortification going slightly slower pace because as you can imagine, need special for that, and uh, storage is different, and the even cleaning is different. I was in PDS wherever this fortified rice is there. When the cooks are cooking, fortified rice. Because since the cooks are not aware that fortified rice, like rice, so they will throw. So these kind of things. Then we are studying. Suppose study the effect of fortified control rice because you will not be aware that this rice is big. when you are studying the values of the vitamins in this case cases in sample not find any then they went to this and they showed uh, how and they have real so all these kinds of things happen. When there is artificial kind of production in grains. Okay. So, biofortification is one agriculture research inter intervention where we, in a sustainable way of combating the micronutrients. Because, see, rice, if you are eating, anyway, 200 to 300 grams of rice is being eaten anyway. So, it is easy if rice is improved your intake is in and also one time investment so that I, I will take only rice exam rice is enriched with vitamin A so you are taking 200 grams even through cooking and others it is lost also something is still retained so your vitamin A requirement is taken care of similarly with zinc similarly with iron because you will and once in place and once once a variety is done So, CO51 is enriched with zinc, let us say. It is available in public and you will all will eat so whatever variety. So, it is enriched with the nutrients. So, you are getting that nutrients. So, that is the logic. Once they are developed, once they are enriched, they are enriched. So, that is the doesn't compromise yield per se. In natural form, toxicity doesn't arise. And biofortification of cereals was some more uh, highlighted. As you are aware, during four, perishable goods are not available. Prices have escalated, however, Rice and wheat through PDS, it has been destroyed. And also, that has uh, that uh, COVID due to the incidences of uh, also highlighted, it's always important to uh, fortify your uh, staple food crop. So, what are the approaches? Okay, now we know biofortification. What are the approaches? Approach is through agronomy, like through your food. Or, uh, uh, nutrients or minerals in the soil, or uh, you spray them, spray, foliar spray, or give it in soil as a fertilizer, fertigation. Those things, enhancement, you are full day. But you tell me, in the time of labor shortage, still engage the labor who will get them paid, and there has been a review since 2000. 
any number there have been n number of publications taking any and many products have been then writing so because of the regulatory as you can see. so you have golden rice all vegetables all fruits times you have you must have seen rice so rice we all know after dehusking you will get brown rice after polishing we will get the white rice sometimes we polish okay rice ke iron iron is most important rice is also and we know in brown rice iron at least uh, is there well uh, brown rice iron is present at least uh, let us say 15 12 ppm let us say 12 brown rice but we don't eat brown and biological the sperm doesn't store iron so once you polish 80% of the iron is lost so whenever we present they will say are you not can we say that uh, iron doesn't come into endosperm because natural variability is not there comes the genetic important <laughs> all these novel genes can be just in the of interest limited genetic variability right suppose somebody see have photos not do that clearly some things are not really cannot be done through breeder convention approaches there yes, yes. so what do they do what do they what do we do in transgenic so we will we will try to enhance the uptake and trans it is to increase its bio availability is there in the available when we are simultaneously all this can be done so easily you so classic genetic see the time 99 it has been demonstrated classic case variety in gene therapy has been put in by they have shown very clearly that iron can be enhanced but till now this product has been after many many remnants availability they have in and so many publications and they have also done combination of genes because so that there is uptake and uh, translocation remobilization and going to the grain and so many cytosetra they have been 2016 itself the rice itself they have attained the recommended doses of iron and zinc tra- transgenic and of course then rice international international rice research basically clearly in wheat also wheat also rice uh, transgenic uh, this culture is slightly simpler after that because being the uh, It is complicated. Even then, you can see lot corn oil, corn sugar, corn starter. Maize is virtually, virtually relevant. And all these developed countries, most of the developed, they have accepted transgenic. So they have corn, other vitamins for bioavailability and also for protein. Lot of transgenic. we are also consuming them without our knowledge still transgenic in develop and by development so let us go to conventional breeding so 
So what happens in conjunction? So you have to evaluate germplasm, as I was mentioning, for iron rice, and also we have to make process. And uh, if we are lucky, we will be able to identify genomically associated with the trait of interest, and we can use them in market system. Here also a lot of things. Started. It has started with UPM. They have some paid material, they have funded, and they are targeting Asian countries and African countries. Paid the material. So you have the head of project by the and extended. And also, first DBT has started, then ICR has started supporting it. Before that, Harvest Plus has been used. See, for any research program, we um, implemented and to deliver the outcome, a lot of funding. Okay, so now we have lot varieties bioavailability so what do we do in the development of biopositive so we have to identify the traits of things as i was mentioning think is available iron then so you have to do and then you have target rate iron quality protein and also have uh, vitamin A because they have not this they are using products. they are developing lot of products About that is uh, that becomes anti nutrient for uh, of the mineral. So you need a little bit uh, uh, reduced phytic acid in bio, and there should be a right balance so that your phytic acid is not too. Uh, so, uh, otherwise, general metabolism and. Uh, so there can be wild species of different genomes also. If you see here, these uh, five are the critical elements what we have seen in the second slide. So how many of them are covering? Still we are not able to cover calcium or iodine. So through food also we cannot cover everything. But we can also cannot target everything. Then biological. And so what, how it does. and from here comes that expectations you can see what expectations are so for the acceptance and adoption by the farm the ultimate level target consume or target uh, is a target is consumer but through farmer so farmers should they should like these varieties they should be high yielding and desirable quality parameters. And most of the uh, do donor genotypes and races. And races are. Armor for the. So these donors, sometimes these land races will have these high value minerals in their growth. They are poor. In Nobody will grow them. And we also need high throughput, high throughput estimation. ICPMS and yes, RF are not. What happens is this is slightly reliable, uh, not so reliable across the lab. Sample data are with one. So at least 6,000 is needed for one.
So what Harvest Plus has done, this is what one, one action by uh, international funding, uh, funding agencies or national funding agencies can give a kick start to any project. So they have provided RFP and also IAW. They have provided that time it was in very high process. So you can uh, roughly, it is not approximate, it is not exact uh, estimate. Roughly, you can estimate. that is enough for the breeding purpose. That they have since of oil and wind. They are trying to develop iron or uh, if the soils are rich or acidic, your values will be different. Soils are poor, your nutrient content will be. Naturally, iron, zinc, all these elements, they are like nitrogen. And for some lucky crops, they have market assisted selection for QTI in deployment. But I was mentioned. Okay, okay, sorry. And you can see uh, Dr. Sanjeev is estimating iron, and it was provided to us. 2011-12, till now we have completed uh, 1 lakh samples and uh, that and wherever in, uh, whenever any NARS partners approach, free of cost. So this, uh, like this, uh, we should get some good infrastructure for the estimation of minerals. And now comes the evaluation and release of biofortified variety. So how do we develop? Okay. Suppose if you take rice or wheat, I identify donors, I cross it with popular varieties for yield, I try to combine yield and um, high nutrient content, whether it is not zinc or protein, then or low, less phytase. Then have yield, high nutrient content, and it should also have the quality. Quality, otherwise it will be rejected. So mo most of us, so it is more uh, pressure on the however, and it is uh, the material will be evaluated in multiple locations at 10 to 30 and promising will be added. So you have, as you can see, under All India Coordinated various crops, whether it is a rice or wheat or maize or pearl millet, we have the system for the evaluation of What they have done in pearl millet is they have fixed a benchmark. Until unless iron is 42 ppm, we will not release. Zinc is 32 ppm, we will not release. So any variety, not only biofort, so they made benchmark value for but for rice and all, it is slightly difficult because we don't get that much of print uh, content. So why it is so difficult? Again, I will try, uh, take this slide. If you are talking about BLB resistance or any single gene controlled uh, um, trait, it is simple. So you simply transfer that particular gene to your background of interest. So combining yield and BLB resistance with BLB XFA, XA5, 21, 13, or any other genes, for five genes, you can fool the same background. But when it comes to um, nutrient uh, use efficiencies or, new, uh, or biofortified, there are so many genes involved. As you can see, this side here, how many, so many genes have been identified. We know only these genes are identified. What are the genes which were not characterized? So, so these many genes. So you have some transporter. We are explaining some kind of phenotypic variation. Let us say your zinc content in grain is 100%. 4 ppm is 100% of 100% trait. 
So this particular these set of genes explain, let us say, 20 percent. Again, these genes set of genes. This is only hypothetical. Explains around 15 percent. So like that, this family of genes explain maybe 25 percent. Again, these genes only explain 10 percent. So unless you have all these genes, you will not favorable alleles of these. Genes. You will not have 100 percent of the gene expression, straight expression. So that's why. And in addition to that, so many genes. In addition to that, you should have yield also. So you you should a breeder should accumulate so many favorable alleles have yield and also high nutrient content in addition to the quality favorable quality alleles. So that's why it is little bit Herculean task. So where a single gene at one go, you will get all your trait, uh, your trait express, uh, your trait is expressed. That's why it is slightly complicated to develop biopolymer. Akshara can also appreciate that it is similar case with uh, salt tolerance also. So and we are also talking about phytic acid, which is an anti. It is generally required for metabolism and plant metabolism. And if it is a higher concentration in uh, rice in grain, it won't bind to your nutrients, making it bioavailable. So this the uh, optimum concentration on the layer of this phytate in the grains. So they have mutants in maize and barley. Rice also they are their general growth is very poor. Their uh, low phytate uh, mutants general growth is. So now comes the genome editing. <laughs> genome editing. Genome editing. <laughs> so genome editing is very precise. Uh, you can just edit even single word like how you manuscript or publications. So this has the potential. Uh, technology has the potential of changing the alleles and whatever transgenic research has been done till now, it has, has given lot of lead to gene editing of uh, biofortification and genes for nutrition. Ladies already know. So the most exciting thing to see here rather than science, I, I feel excited by the deregulation of this SDN1 and SD12. Get Nobel Prizes come and go, but uh, deregulation of SDN1 and SDN genes are by government of India are quite exciting for us because genome editing can be uh, used you now. Please of the variety. This, te this technology is not considered like uh, unlike uh, GMOs. Technology has been approved by government of India, and the varieties can be released using genetic modification following the protocol guidelines given by government of. India. So, this is conventional breeding where you have the gene of interest, but with that you have undesirable genes also. Whereas using genetic engineering, your directly your gene can be introgressed. And here, using genome editor editing, your susceptibility gene can be modified, or your target gene can be designer uh, designer breeding. Okay. So in uh, IIRR, uh, Dr. Satendra Mangrote has developed a genome edited line for the grain cytokine in oxidase. So he has uh, done. There is one gene called cytokine in oxidase, though it is not relevant. Education, I'm just mentioning so that the scope is there. Scope for genome science for varietal release uh, provided by government of India and uh, in all India coordinated trials. This material is already under second year of evaluation. So he has uh, modified one uh, PPT 5204 Samba Masuri variety. For its grain number. In addition to that, there is 35 percent increase in yield is there. As you can see, this is the BPT 
panicle. These are the genome panicles of genome edited lines. Lot of growth is there. This is significant because this genome edited uh, reading line has been deregulated by DDT. Following the process. So this is first line. Following this, IRA, Dr. Chibeshnadenshin is also known lines for salt and drought tolerance. The technology has paved way. You can do many things in biofortification of the technology. So this is 485 grains against 220 grains. And there have been some deletions in exon 2 of the gene. Cytokine. There is increase in the cytokine in hormone so that the grain number is in. So now what? What is the take home lesson from that uh, genome edited line for gr high, higher grain number? So you have all the uh, elements and tutels characterized. So either you can knock out, either you can uh, reduce the gene expression like cytic acid or increase the gene expression like the other gene and also knock out the protein. And inactivation of protein and activation of protein activity also can be done in genome editing. So they have already done, uh, this has been done in 2020, okay. They have put the carotenoid genes, they have developed golden rice in uh, genomic safe harbors in rice using CRISPR-Cas and they have already uh, shown that there is no yield penalty. And also, there is there are no off targets, but still, this has not yet been um, has been done in I think China collaboration with IRI. This has not been at to see the uh, light. So similarly, one genes. Uh, if you remember, this family of genes have been discussed earlier. This gene has been knocked out. OS NRAM2 gene knocked out using. Uh, you know, CRISPR technique, uh, technology and this technology, using this technology, the iron has been enhanced and cadmium has been reduced. Cadmium, you know, heavy metal, it's, uh, uh, it's incorporation in grain gives to a heavy metal toxicity to humans, whosoever consume, so that they have targeted. And similarly, another gene, OSNRAM5 gene has been knocked out using CRISPR technology and it accumulates lesser cadmium. So you see transgenic and traditional breeding and also genome editing can also be explored for bio developing biofortification projects, biofortification products. So Branaila has been targeted using genome editing. The oleic acid has been reduced and linoleic acid has been enhanced. And GABA, another uh, non-protein molecule, amino acid, which is which plays health um, role in human health has also been enhanced sevenfold and uh, in right and of course uh, the uh, glycemic index now is the latest uh, uh, <laughs> buzzword in uh, nutrition so even this resistant starch has also been enhanced using and phytic acid, of course, very obvious anti-nutrient, which has been knocked out in rice. Not only in rice, we also, our uh, cesium also has been knocked out. The gene for cesium also has also been knocked out in Japan because of the, uh, they have this uh, atom bomb uh, nuclear accidents in Fukushima, okay? So, you see, these are the, these are all the genes which have been identified for biofortification in rice using earlier genome, uh, genetic engineering technology. They have been functionally validated. So a list is already available, which can be uh, targeted through crispr cas for uh, development, for in enhancing the iron or zinc content or for reduction of the phytic acid. So these can be used in genome editing for enhancing the nutritive quality of rice. Similarly, I have just taken one case in wheat in wheat, the gluten gives uh, leads to allergy to some, causing celiac disease. So they have targeted these gluten genes 
even in NIPB Delhi also they are doing. They have targeted these genes and they have uh, developed wheat with low gluten. And maize also sweet corn that is sunken gene and waxy gene have also been knocked out. Now you might be aware there are some journals who are exclusively publishing, you know, editing articles. So, so much of uh, um, research work is being done in genome editing. <laughs> Similarly, in sorghum, you have tuffering, uh, which are uh, anti, not so good protein. So they, they have been knocked out so that sorghum quality is in. So these are all some of the case studies uh, make you aware of the potential of genome editing. So now we will see through conventional breeding or marker assisted selection, what are the varieties developed across the cereals? So let us see rice. Here you see what is the baseline available for zinc and for protein, because whatever biologically uh, achievable targets only we have taken. So in rice, zinc and protein can be done. So uh, the baseline available in, suppose you go to market and get some rice from either uh, mandis or shop, to get around 12 to 15 ppm or 16 ppm, they are lucky of zinc in the polished rice. Our target is 28 ppm. Similarly, protein around 7 to 8 ppm. So we should have high yield zinc and quality. And several donors have been identified. Till today, 13 varieties have been released by Biofat. High zinc or protein in rice. So all in the eclipse. Similarly, for rice, you see, what is the baseline? 28 to 32 ppm of iron. 45 ppm is target. Zinc is 30 to 30 32 ppm. 40, more than 40 ppm is the target. And you see, so many varieties have been developed across the uh, country by various institutes, whether it is Punjab Agriculture University or IAWER Karnal or from IRRS uh, or many other centers have developed many uh, biofortified varieties for rice. Sorry, for, for wheat. And maize. Maize is another interesting case. As you can see, that quality protein, lysine, and tryptophan have been targeted for these markers are also available. In addition to that, recently they have identified markers for vitamin E also, tocopherol. So they have double hybrids. So they have uh, quality protein and also pro vitamin E. And quality uh, protein and also Vitamin E, they have double hybrids and they also have high protein lines and these have been developed. This is actually first biofortified crop and it has a lot of uh, interest. And pearl millet, as I have shown, benchmark has been set for the pearl millet until it is 42 ppm and iron and zinc. They don't release the variety system. But here, in addition to yield, in addition to 42 ppm and 32 ppm of iron and zinc, they should also have downy milk resistance, which is mandatory. So you can imagine the pressure of the breeder. So sorghum, anyway, sorghum we know very well, already biofortified. Only anti-nutrients needs to be reduced in crop. And some colored, uh, some sorghum varieties have been released. And small millets also to have a lot of... Uh, Varieties released from little millet and also from finger millet, around three varieties are released. And here even calcium, they, they have set the target. So outside India, if you see in Bangladesh, there are fortified varieties. At least uh, six or seven varieties have been released. Philippines also has released some varieties. Wheat also in uh, first variety by fortified variety. The harvest plus okay, as well as in Pakistan and several other varieties of course vitamin A vitamin A maize is called VAM it has been released in African countries many other crops like sweet potato and cassava and iron bean are not serious they are staple to use so now there are at least 115 varieties biofortified varieties across crops not only cereal, across crop vegetables are available in India. More than 200 are available, or maybe 300 are available across the world. 
so they should they should reach the target consumers now that is the major issue so bio fortified crops were bred on par with adopted popular varieties tolerant to pests and having desirable quality and also suitable maturity period right otherwise farmers will not grow hmm? in ad in addition to the um, enhanced nutrition so what should we do for the adoption of by the farmers see sometimes the farmers are consuming like how they have done orange flesh with sweet potato in african countries then it can be adopted by all but it is very difficult to convince farmers so uh, and you will not believe when i have taken all the bio released bio fortified varieties for demonstration purpose to a village the farmer first asked me whether you have any proof that it has been studied in or some kind of proof is there do not in this high five words he has asked me so they want some asterisk also studies validated by studies done by so you can imagine the, the awareness of farmers also and they said what is this all bold varieties you got we want medium slender varieties we don't want this. so all our 10 years effort gone with they don't want medium bold or long bold so so are the choices of farmers because it's driven by again millers so uh, cropping pattern farm area expansion so it should not should not exactly fit to the whatever varieties they are growing otherwise they will not hmm. so this is what has been observed so they should what we say is you grow at least you eat their health is improved right so that is what we say often and sometimes the demands comes with things past we have been working past 10 years they are trying so much to convince zinc because zinc they will not understand iron little bit they will understand zinc they will never understand because and it is not visible also see only after covid people have come to know about the zinc word at least otherwise what zinc Cal calcium is also easy to explain to layman because bones and all we can it zinc immunity and all they will say what is this <laughs> forget about it but gi you see the demand because now diabetes is on the rise everybody asks about gi means even they don't know the expansion of gi they will ask for gi rice that kind of demand should come from farmers so gi rice is also one um, classic example of bio fortified rice it's not not bio fortified rice the other way it is nutritional rice also so this is case study of the pearl millet pearl millet advantage is they have started in 2011 by harvest plus and ipsat and other national institute they have released the varieties they fixed the benchmark and pearl millet is already there in public distribution system in rajasthan and other that part of gujarat and that part of the uh, country so they have integrated this bio fortified variety and in parallel because international organizations are funding it they have studied in four independent studies were made by school children by adolescents school children have fed it and they have shown their iron levels are increased four independent studies have been done on bioavailability iron has been increased so it is in, uh, it is very easy to convince the policy makers once there was a meeting conducted by tata carnal institute for which all of us researchers policy makers everybody have come so that lady said uh, madam we have bio fortified rice with zinc first of all she has asked what is zinc then we explained little bit zinc is this then he said no then she said it should be like blue colored kerosene so it should be so distinct then i said if it is blue colored our farmers will not eat golden rice yellow color also lot of research has gone so if we, we give blue colored rice who <laughs> will eat that and then she said how we will segregate in the market you want us to procure this as bio fortified rice then how we will procure because you say it is now way different from your regular rice how we will give special price let us learn no special price how we will procure how we will know that is that is bio fortified rice so these kind of things come 
and all these things are policy decisions but still so then they said we should have something in mandi where you can you know find uh, whether it is high zinc or low zinc then we can give special price for the pharma even if you give 1 rupee more for uh, biopharticide or any crop farmer can definitely but how to detect it? see you see this is like a uh, classic case if you are changing the uh, crop farmers will not uh, even consumers will not adapt if you are not changing how to identify it huh? okay so however formulate they have integrated because they have made the benchmark and bioavailability is also important i was telling even farmers ask whether this has been studied its efficacy has been proved even policy makers also need all these ias officers and all they will ask whether their toxicity has been studied whether it has been studied in mice or clinical trials have been conducted so all this needs to be studied so if the great difficulty we have we have given the biofortified rice to national institute of nutrition uh, they have studied in rice uh, using biofortified rice this uh, mouse is fed with uh, diet with enriched zinc this is with biofortified rice this is with controlled rice this is zinc deficient rice so they have clearly shown that uh, the plasma zinc content and other um, zinc parameters have uh, increased the body weight of the rice in addition to that maize hybrids that pro vitamin a hybrid if you remember using these in vitro studies they have shown if they are eating 200 grams of this maize at least 64% of rda is enhanced so just imagine giving this to uh, mid day meal we are giving some maize roti or maize soup school children who are taking mid day meal their 50% of rda is scattered but again studying this Uh, is taking some more time proving the, the clinical trial is taking some time and of course maize is also fed to chicken and it has clearly shown that abdominal fat is uh, reduced and uh, breast muscle has increased using biofortified rice so the so that uh, commercial implication is there so these are various schemes various government schemes which are run um where food is directly provided okay even if you say uh, if you take uh, mid day meal scheme or other schemes rice or wheat is directly provided or millets are directly provided in this is biofortified products can be integrated and these can be provided to various under various schemes so now comes the last part whether uh, often this question is being asked whenever we are enhancing whether it it is of toxic uh, even the policy makers also ask whether it is toxic because you are uh, telling me you have increased the zinc zinc is heavy metal or iron is uh, uh, heavy uh, like whether it, it is toxic but if you see whatever we are enhancing the biological limitations we have it caters maximum to 50% of the rda so for example for rice If full RDA, if you want to meet, at least rice should have 70 ppm of zinc in its polished rice. So uh, that biological constraint is there, and in addition to that, we cannot, it cannot be toxic unless we are eating kgs and kgs of at one meal. So these are the some of the challenges how to integrate, and uh, for developers also it is challenging because there is called something called dilution. they are increasing the yield your transport regimes are only limited they can only transport this much uh, suppose if i am doing selections sir from the uh, breeding line itself i i can tell this has good yield so definitely zinc will be less that that kind of thing and no major genes are qtl not not major genes for instance submergent sub sub1 qtl it explains 60% like that we don't have any major qtl so grower adoption of bio fortified varieties there is no special price for bio fortified so farmer is not interested to educate him so much uh, even then these are miller driven market 
so they will not grow in the right so market segregation this is a big question so how to segregate even if they are ready to give uh, dr girish chandel has uh, tried to give some special price they have given some 5 rupees extra in fees but but again it is difficult to segregate because it is the like that question so the farmers expect buy back also they want to see a growing by how much we can buy and how much we can buy. so that kind of thing is there and the taste and acceptability is also being studied and uh, the one question is you are telling we are over dependent on uh, staple foods are uh, um, are being overly consumed again we are making it over dependent by biofortification that is also one criticism we face often and uh, finally i mentioned we have uh, icr supports one consortia research platform 2014 and pnai dr jay prakash is a partner from in rice and dr jan joel is partner from in maize and in addition to that we have all these bioavailability studies at nin and the national institute of animal physiology also because the questions often rise there okay you are talking about the grains what happens to the straw whether uh, that straw also has high nutrients so that experiment has also been done and it has been shown that the straw ha also has some high uh, nutrient content and buff buffalo studies and uh, feeding studies to buffaloes and uh, uh, lactating uh, are being conducted and uh, recently pgi mer from in chandigarh and the nabi from chandigarh are also included in this project just to keep it back getting this yeah yeah uh, included from this is 37 centers project across uh, so many crops and bioavailability so we are thankful to icr icr as well as bdc and all our ddgs and ddgs they say it is uh, monitored by pmo so pmo has dedicated some of these varieties and during world food day and our target often asked these biofortification is for these kids and these mother so you can see uh, if my baby is healthy mother is very weak so if they through icds or mdm if they are getting good food this is the anganwadi school attached to kvk so these are uh, these are our target consumer we want these babies or mothers to be healthy so that our dalis are not a disability adjusted years are reduced at least by two um, two micro by 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 bio fortification thank you very much and that, that is my number the email id can ping or whatsapp or mail me have any doubts or anything